Hello, everybody, and welcome to the digital online service here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Uh, for this week, we are certainly glad that you have taken the time out of your busy schedule to join us. There's a couple of things that, that I, I would like to go over before we get started with the service itself. Number one, if you uh, please could, in the comments section, uh, tell us who you are. Tell us the ones that are worshiping so that we know who's worshiping with us. We have ways of counting, but if, if you uh, go ahead and put your name, it sure makes things a lot easier. Uh, number two, if you wish to, to give us an offering, uh, you can send it to P.O. Box 921, Lufkin, Texas, and the zip code there is 75902. And it would be appreciated so that, that we can continue to do uh, and bring you this service. If you ever wish to, to worship with us in person, we do in-person worship on Sundays at 11 a.m. And our address is 1505 South John Reddit Drive here in Lufkin, Texas. It's uh, right by the, the intersection of Copeland and the South Loop, which is John Reddit Drive. It's actually on Hank Street. And we would be glad for you to come and join us. Uh, if you have any kind of prayer concerns or anything else that you want us to, to lift up, because we are a praying, uh, praying con congregation, uh, just put those in the comments as well. Uh, now that we have these things over, uh, let us prepare our hearts for worship.
Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, send your Holy Spirit on each and every one that, that is worshiping with us today. And let this service be truly wonderful for all. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Go fight, win. Amen. Let's join in our profession of faith this morning. Our profession of faith will be the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended to heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It's a reunion every time we go home, every time we embrace those we love, no matter how long it's been. It feels like sunrise, like the clouds are parting and the rain has ended. It is joy, nothing less than pure joy to grab hold of those who are at home for us, who make home for us. Whether we wake up with them every day or travel many miles to see them again, it is joy to go home. The prophet Zephaniah tells us to rejoice at the thought of going home. The prophet tells us to imagine being set free, being unburdened, being released to live, to fully live in the grace and wonder of life itself, surrounded by those who love us like no one else, and then to live like that was our truth, even now, even here. It is joy to go home. John the Baptist reminds us, however, 
that it takes choices to live in this joy. It doesn't just happen. We choose to make life a joy by how we love others and how we serve and give and care for others. By how we do the job we do and how we impact the world around us. We build joy as we build a home in this world and the next. We light these candles, the candles of hope and of peace and of joy, as a sign that we are on our way home and we walk with a skip in our step because we can see the destination and it is pure joy. It is time to go home. Let's go to our Lord in silent prayer and reflection. Dear Lord, we are joyous today, we, we, and we try to always be joyful because uh, in you lies joy. Uh, in this season of Advent that's all around us, sometimes it's easy for us to, uh, to just lose our, our focus, but, but help us remember that, that we are in the preparation for your coming and uh, help us open our, our, our whole being to your, to your, your, your arrival so that, that we can do the things that are necessary. Lord, we know that there are so many people that are, that are sick and ailing, they're in hospital and at home. We ask that you continue to uh, send your, your Holy Spirit on them so that they can, they can feel that and have the strength and comfort so that they can continue to get better. We also ask that you bless the caregivers, uh, both the, the professional caregivers in the hospitals, the, the nurses, the, the techs, the doctors, and those caregivers at home that do the, the vitally important thing of, of doing all the things that are necessary for us to get better. And also help us remember that even though in this season of Advent, even in this season of, uh, before Christmas when we're going through parties and we're having fun and, and we're, we're seeing people that we have not seen in a very long time, this is still a season uh, that, that some people uh, f find anxiety in because of either loss of loved ones or, 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 or tragic events that have happened. Help us be mindful of that as we go forward so that we can project the love and the grace that you work through us. Lord, we are so thankful for your, this, this gift that we celebrate, your son, Jesus Christ. And we lift up that prayer that he taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beauty in it all It's 
Good morning, Chip. Hey, Tater. Don't you look great today? I love that shirt. <laughs> uh, it's the same shirt I always wear. Ah, uh, yes. The classics. You can never go wrong with the classics. Might I add that you are obviously a style setter. <laughs> Tater, what's happening? You're starting to freak me out. <laughs> chip, chip, chip. You are a kidder, aren't you? Tater, does this odd behavior happen to have anything to do with Christmas coming up? What do you mean? Who's been talking? Was it... Claus? <laughs> That's it! You're trying to be nice! You've been naughty all year, and now you're trying to fool Santa into thinking that you've been nice! No. No, no. <laughs> I have not been naughty all year. Maybe 50-50. But I'm not taking any chances. Do you know what a, what a kid can do with a stocking full of coal around here? Um, I never really thought about it that much. Well, I have nothing! <laughs> That's what coal is worth in these parts. And I don't want any. Mm-mm. Tater, it's good that you want to be nice. But that's something you should do all year, not just at Christmas time. All year? <laughs> Are you crazy? Do you really think Claus watches everybody all year to check up on us? No. Exactly! We don't act nice to impress Santa, or anyone else for that matter. We act nice because that's how God wants us to act. Wait a minute. So God is Santa's intelligence service? <laughs> that's brilliant! No, God does not work for Santa. Oh, I get it. God is a freelancer, an independent contractor. No! Honestly, Tater, do you listen to a word Brother Steve says? Nope. <laughs> I tend to nod off after the singing. It helps me keep my youthful glow. <laughs> right. Well, God created us in his image, and God wants us to treat all people with decency and respect. 
In other words, be nice. Why? That seems a little extreme. <laughs> God's love is extreme, and that's what we are showing. That is what the Christmas season is all about. It's about God's love. Whoa, pump the brakes and slow down. <laughs> Christmas is about God's love? That is right. So I don't have to worry about Claus's naughty list? Tater, honestly, don't worry about anything except how you can show the world God's love and God's grace this season. God loved the world so much that he gave us Jesus, his only son. That is why we celebrate Christmas, not so we can get more presents. Chip, that is radical. It's so crazy, it just might work. <laughs> All right, I'll give it a shot. Great. Let's start by praying. Everyone bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for giving us your son. Thank you for giving us your son. Thank you for Christmas. Thank you for Christmas. And help us show your love all year. And help us show your love all year. Amen. Amen. Chip, God loves you, but I don't think he loves that shirt. <laughs> I mean, really, when are you going to change, man? Tater, come back here and I'll show you some change. <laughs> Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses four through seven. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, open up our minds, open up our hearts, and help us learn. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Go fight, win. Amen. The season of Advent that we're now in is, is a time of preparation. But, but for what? For, for decorating and buying the perfect gifts for friends and family? Hmm, yes and no. It, it's really a time for us to prepare for the birth of our Savior. Every week we have a word that describes what we need to do to prepare. Uh, and this week is the joy week. This is the season of joy. The, the, the whole Advent Christmas season is really marked to us as a season of joy. This is a time for us to be joyful. This is for a time for us to, to, to lift the spirits of not just ourselves and our family and our church family, but for all those around us. Uh, do you see happy people in this constant bombardment of ads that you see this time of year? You know, even the, el uh, even the animals that sell beer are joyful. You know, they're all happy. I want to see some grumpy ads. I want to, I want to see even Scrooge in the ads is happy as, as he's doing his Peloton. And so the church goes all in as well. We, we have parties and special worship services, and we give gifts, and, and that's okay. You know, that's great. I mean, I'm, I'm all for that. But what is the reason that we rejoice. Why do we show so much joy? That's, that's a really difficult question. That's something we need to look at because when we look at our text today, on face value, it seems rather, I don't know, Pollyannish, that we should always be up, that we should be smiling and happy, and, and that we shouldn't have a care in the world. Have you ever met people like that? You know, to be honest, I can kind of sort of be like that. Now, I'll confess, some of my sunshiny persona is really to get under grumpy people's skin. Uh, I can admit it, and it's still a lot of fun to do to see them you know, really get just, just really upset because I'm so happy. 
but rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Now, that attitude would really send some people into deep space. But let's look at the context that these words were written in. The author, Paul, was in prison waiting for execution. Really? Rejoice in the Lord always? Shouldn't he be praying for legions of angels to come and save him? And, you know, and the, the prison he's in, it, it, it's, it's not what we think of. You know, it, it's, you know, we think of dark, dank dungeons. It was, it was probably a hole in the ground. It was probably some, some cave that they, they threw in the ground that he's there, uh, probably no light, no, no ability to really do much writing. Uh, everything comes from a hole in the top, and that's how they get them in, get them out. The sanitary conditions were awful. It stunk. And he's writing this to a church that is truly being persecuted. I don't mean that people are telling them happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas. I mean, they're being killed and worse, you know, just for being Christians, you know, as they are labeled a, a follower of the way, they are, they are being tortured and they are dying and their, their families are being tortured. Families are ripped apart. They're losing everything because of, of their beliefs. And what does Paul say? Again, I say rejoice. But, you know, the rejoicing Paul is talking about here is not the ignoring of problems and divisions. You know, Paul is headed to his death. The church at Philippi is shrinking. These problems are real. But they will not have the final word. You know, it, in, in this, this time of pandemic for the last couple of years, you know, we have been in a struggle. You know, our numbers here at St. Paul's are down. Uh, well, our in-person worship numbers are down. Our overall worships are, are, are up. But, but we still are having a problem uh, connecting with people and finding out how to make that, that digital uh, connection a real connection to where it, it actually works and, and causes people to rejoice. Other churches across the county, other churches across the state, other churches across the country, that they're really having product, uh, problems that we're not experiencing because everything is down. Their giving's down. And, and, and the, you know, they're in this, this, this crossroads of, of really what are they to do? They're in deep struggles, financially, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Struggles are not an excuse to stop trusting in God. You know, to stop caring for one another, to backslide into vision and attacks. And so often we use that as just that. When we're coming into struggles, when we come into obstacles, that, that, that we use that to, to, to entrench ourselves in our own silos. No, struggles are a time for, for intentional faith development. They are time for prayer, for reflection, and to listen to God speaking through us. And, you know, sometimes we have this, this, this grandiose thing that, that the church is at war with Christmas. And, and we're not. As Christians, as followers of Jesus, we are seen by the non-believer public as either shallow, you know, Jesus is happiness. If you follow Jesus, you'll be just, just, uh, just like me, always smiling, always happy. Or we're seen as someone who just, like, just ate a lemon. You know, we're sour. We are all going through struggles at this time. We are churches of imperfect people. That's a very important point. Church is people. All the church is made of people. And we're churches of imperfect people. But are we showing joy? Are we showing our faith in Jesus? Are we listening and reflecting to see where God is leading or are we bickering and fighting over wording? In this time of preparation for the kingdom of Jesus, joy is a verb. It's an action word. Let's read these verses again. This time, let's look how they can, well, we can use them for good things, not, not for bad things. 
Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Go fight, win, amen. So go out into the world, showing the world God's love and God's grace, not just by the things that you say, but by the things that you do. Go fight, win. Amen. Hi, Joy. Hi, Joy. For all you do, this gets for you. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. King? King? That concludes our digital online service here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church in Lufkin, Texas. We hope that you enjoyed it. And we are so glad that, that you took the time out of your busy week to join us. If you wish to join us in an in-person service, uh, we worship at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings at 1505 South John Reddit Drive here in Lufkin, Texas. And that is the intersection of Hank Street and the South Loop. Uh, we would enjoy any kind of, of note that you would like to drop us. Uh, you can drop us a line uh, in mail, and our address is uh, 1505 South John Reddit Drive in Lufkin, Texas, and the zip code is, is uh, 75904, or you can call us at 936-634-7810. My email address is Steve Killam, and it's at K-I-L-L-A-M underscore S-T-E-V-E -E at Hotmail.com. That's Killam underscore Steve at Hotmail.com. Send us a line. Join us. Be with us. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Go fight, win. Amen. <laughs>